see it's David right now. Good morning. I am Pastor Andrew, and greetings from the Modesto Church of the Brethren online version for May 17th, 2020. If you are tuning in for the first time, welcome. And if you would like to visit once we resume our in-person worship, we are located at 2301 Woodland Avenue, Modesto, California, 95358. I, stre I stream today from my home and pray that you are all staying home and well during this time and always. Please note that you can type greetings and converse with others while watching. You can also message or email this page with any questions, comments, joys, concerns, or prayer requests that you would like to share privately. This week's Zoom Bible study will be on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Please email me or this page if you would be interested in joining or if you would like to set up a new date and time. Today's sermon is entitled Community and will be based upon Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. I would like to thank today's volunteers for helping with worship. We have Linda, for, who will be playing the piano, David, who is helping to lead singing, Jonathan for offering our opening prayer, Maddie, who is reading scripture, Kelly for children's time, and Allison for sharing of the joys and concerns, as well as being our lead technical advisor. Next week, Jeff Glass will be bringing the sermon, and we appreciate the message that he will bring and the challenge and comfort he will offer to us all. And now, if Jonathan would please lead us in a word of prayer. We are the church. We join our hearts together. We listen for the word of God through scripture. We feel each other's joy and sorrow as we share in prayer together. Today, we will break bread together and remember we are one that we cannot be together. We are the church and we gather across time and space to worship God now. Thank you, Jonathan. And now David will be leading us in a time of singing. Our hymn this morning is Healer of Our Every Ill, uh, which is found in our hymnal, but the words will be shown up on the screen. And hope beyond our sorrow. You who know our fears and sadness, grace us with your peace and gladness, spirit of all comfort, fill our hearts. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow. Give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. In the pain and joy beholding how your grace is still unfolding, give us all your vision, God of love. Healer of our every ill, 
light of each tomorrow. Give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Give us strength to love each other, every sister, every brother. Spirit of all kindness, be our God. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow. Give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Who know each thought and feeling, teach us all your way of healing, spirit of compassion, fill each heart. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, Give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our Thank you, David, for sharing that song of hope and of promise with each of us. And now we have our scripture for today, coming again from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Afterwards, we will be having a time for the children. So if the children are watching or would like to gather, uh, Kelly will be sharing a time with them here shortly. But first, we have the scripture with Maddie. Acts 2, 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Uh, is it okay for me to talk right now, Andrew? Awesome. So today, and I'm going to have my door open because our dogs keep wanting to come in. We are going to be reading the book, The Book with No Pictures. And I want you guys to think about, is there ever a time when you have felt that you have needed to use your imagination or you've needed to feel really, really silly? I know for me, that one time I felt like I really needed to be really, really silly because wasn't in a good mood, so I knew that this was going to be the right, that it would be a good time for me to be, be silly. So here we go. The Book with No Pictures by B.J. Novak. This is a book with no pictures. It might seem like no fun to have someone read to you a book with no pictures. It probably seems boring and serious, except that. Here is how the book works. Everything the words say, the person reading the book has to say it, no matter what. That's the deal. That's the rule. So that means even if the words say, bark, wait, what? That doesn't even mean anything. Blur. Wait, wait a second. What? This isn't the kind of book I wanted to read. And I have to say every word the book says? Uh-oh. I 
and many monkeys who taught myself to read. Hey, I'm not a monkey. And now I'm reading this, this to you with my monkey mouth and my monkey voice. That's not true. I'm not a monkey. Yes, I am a monkey. Also, I am a robot monkey. What? And my head is made of blueberry pizza. Wait a second. Is this whole book a trick? Can I stop reading, please? No. And now it's time for me to sing you my favorite song. A song. Do I really have to sing out? Love, 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 my face is a bug. I eat it for breakfast right off the rug. What? This book is ridiculous. Can I stop reading yet? No. There are more pages. I have to read the rest. My only friend in the whole wide world is a hippo named Boo Boo Butt. <gasps> Boo Boo Butt? And also, the kids I'm reading this book to are the best kids ever in the in the history of the entire world. Oh, really? And these kids are the smartest kids too because this these kids chose this book even though it had no pictures because these kids know that this book makes grown-ups have to say silly things and make silly sounds like Oh no, no, no. Here it comes. Glurg, I walk, oh my grandpa do. Ay, 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 brog, brog, brog. Oh, eems. Blackity, blackity, glibbity, globbity, globbity, glibbity, beep, boop. Eee, my doongy face. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Please don't ever make me read this book again. It is so silly. In fact, it is completely and utterly preposterous. Next time, please, 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 please choose a book with pictures. Please, because this is just too ridiculous to read. The end. Bonk, I didn't want to say that. So that is the book with no pictures. And I hope that you guys are thinking about a time when you needed to feel really silly or you had to use your imagination because I know in these kinds of times that it's really important when we're, when we're with our families to use our imagination and to be silly. So I want us all to go ahead and hold our hands or if you're with your family, here, family, hold my hand. So we're gonna hold our hands. Holding hands. And we're gonna say a little prayer together, okay? Here we go. Dear God, thank you in these really trying times that we are able to be silly and use our imagination together. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Kelly, for sharing in that children's story. I think I can safely say that despite our age, as we all appreciated the words that you offered. As we enter into today's text from Acts chapter 2, again, verses 42 through 47, we read that the community of believers shared in four activities together. We Just prior to today's scripture reading in verses 40 and 41, we learn that that community numbered somewhere in the range of 3,000 believers. So we have a text in which 3,000 believers are sharing together in four different activities, or four activities together. The first of these activities is learning from the apostles about Jesus, Jesus's life, his ministry, and his teachings. And I was thinking about how is it that we learn best? Do we learn best from reading? Do we learn best from listening and taking notes? Or perhaps we do better learning from research and trying to figure out some of the reasons behind the learning, do we learn better from doing, just being hands-on with what it is that we're trying to learn? Or perhaps we learn best by modeling our behaviors after someone who has already knows how to do the task that we are trying to learn ourselves. There are many different ways to learn and we do not all learn in the same ways. And I know that our educators within our congregation and those who are watching 
could do a much better job than I am at explaining the different ways that we learn as well as the theories behind all of them. And so, and I will not belabor that point any further. But we have these early church members learning together from the apostles. So we have the 3,000 learning from the 12. The second activity that we have this community of believers doing together is gathering for fellowship with one another. If we read through the gospel accounts of Jesus's life and his ministry, this seems to be an important aspect to Jesus's ministry. And so it's something that has been passed on from one generation and to the next. Now, we don't know exactly who the community was. We don't have all of the demographics or all of the, the data that's been collected upon each person that was there. But we can assume, safely assume that it was a varied group, that there were some differences among the people, that they were not all the same. And yet they were still invited and they all came together. Think about that all of the differences that we have within our world were also the, some of the differences that existed back then. And it was just as radical then as it would be for us today if 3,000 people with all kinds of interests and beliefs and differences in, or preferred foods and diets as well as languages and just all the different customs that they would observe. And yet here it is that they are all coming to fellowship and to share with one another. What an amazing and beautiful picture it presents to us. Luke also writes that the community broke bread or ate together as equals, <clears throat> excuse me, as partners in ministry. Again, if we turn back to Luke's first account, that is the gospel, we can see that Jesus ate with a remarkably diverse group of people. He ate with tax collectors. He ate with sinners. He ate with religious leaders. He ate with ordinary people. He ate with the rich. He ate with the poor. He ate with men, and he ate with women. He ate with the powerful and also the powerless of his day and of his society. It must have been similar with this group of believers that Luke writes about. That this group of bystanders, that the bystanders who are watching on are seeing people from all walks of life gathering together and not only sharing in fellowship with one another, but also with eating with one another, sharing of a common meal. It must have also, from a cook's perspective, must have been also quite the sight to find one meal that they all enjoyed. Lastly, Luke record or Luke writes that the community got, comes together for prayer, and it sounds as if this was not happening just during the worship services, but it was happening at all times and, in, and throughout the life of the community that has gathered. The practice of prayer is what grounded and encouraged and solidified the community and its ministry that it would begin to undertake shortly after what we have written for today. And it was these four practices that drew people to the fledgling movement that we now call Christianity. As Luke writes, day after day, the Lord added to their number everyone who was experiencing liberation. That's how it's recorded, or that's how it's written and translated in the voice translation. It's a powerful testimony to what it is that was happening within the early church. As is the case with most biblical passages, te people tend to have a reaction to today's scripture. If we look, we can read throughout history that the most common reaction by pastors, biblical teachers, and religious leaders is to try to explain away the scripture by saying that what Luke was writing it was not a literal account of what was happening. Instead, what Luke intended, actually intended in his writing is the, to provide a glimpse into what will happen in heaven rather than hear what is happening here on earth. Personally, I believe this to be an unsatisfactory explanation, and I think it's 
one that discredits Luke's writing rather than placing importance upon them. And it is disheartening that this should be critiqued by religious leaders as to be an unattainable goal, as this scripture should be a source of encouragement as to what the church can be like now. We are and we can be more in the here and the now, as well as in the sweet by and by. We discussed this text in, the, in this week's Bible study, and many of us had a reaction to the text that was due in large part to the circumstances in which we find ourselves today, in which you find yourselves who, who are watching here today as well. We noted that we were a little jealous of this scripture, of the people within this scripture. We noticed that we were a little jealous of the believers being able to come together in community because we recognized and we admitted that we all that we have a longing for a time when our community can safely rejoin with one another we know that day is coming we can tr we are trusting and we are believing that we will be able to come together again soon and yet reading about it also May hit kind of a sore spot with for my, for many of us as we hear about these early believers coming together because we look forward to that day within our church. For those of you who have read your brother in history books lately, you may be thinking that as you heard the scripture, maybe you're thinking to yourself, this scripture sounds a lot like what it was that Alexander Mack and the early founders of the Church of the Brethren were trying to do, and you would be right, because the early Church of the Brethren sought to model itself after the early church in its beliefs and also in its practices, and that includes the ones in today's text. These early brethren took the, er, took the words of Jesus seriously as we continue to do within our current Church of the Brethren, and tried to follow Jesus's example as well as that of the early church as closely as they could, for better or for worse. There, there are many stories within our early history of the membership trying to follow the examples of Jesus and taking them, again, with utmost seriousness and having some, diff some difficult consequences within their lives and within the lives of their faith community, and yet they stuck to it. So as we read about the early church, as we read about these founders of the Church of the Brethren and how they sought to model themselves after these members that Luke records, what would it be like if we at the Modesto Church of the Brethren lived out this text and model within our lives, within the life of our community. Because let's assume and let's believe and have trust and have faith that there is a day coming when we will be able to safely gather back together. What would it look like if when we come back together, we were to live out the text in which Luke writes about, and the community in which Luke records for us and for future generations. Because if we remember that today's scripture is coming about as the church is first developing, this is at the very beginning of the church's life together. This is, in fact, a reflection upon what has been called by many as the church's birthday. And then, so it seems like this is a good time to hear today's text from Acts, because we too are beginning to think about ways of coming back together, together, <laughs> and in new ways, and perhaps in new forms. Now we have the opportunity to talk about and to recreate and to reshape the church into looking and being the community that we have always believed and envisioned that it would be. I would encourage you to dream about what the Modesto Church of the Brethren will look like now and into the future as we begin to emerge, as we begin to come back together again. 
as we look forward to today of the day when we can come and pray together, worship together, rejoice together, fellowship together, and eat together, and be the community of Christ together. May it be so from this day on and forevermore. Amen. Before we enter into our joys and concerns for this morning, I would like to just highlight again a few of the announcements that we had earlier. Again, you can message or email this page with any questions, comments, joys, concerns, or prayer requests that you would like to share either with the community or like to share privately. This week's Zoom Bible study will be on Wednesday at one o'clock. However, if that time does not work for you or you and you would like to set up a new day and time, please contact me directly and we'll see what we can do. And if you would like to join us on Wednesday at one o'clock, please email me for contact information as well. I would like again to thank today's volunteers for helping with worship. It has been a blessing for me to be able to hear the varied and the rich voices that our community has to offer. And I would like to thank Linda for playing the piano, David for leading singing, Jonathan for offering our opening prayer, Maddie and reading scripture, and Kelly for sharing with us the children's story, as well as Allison who will be sharing of our joys and our concerns and being our lead technical advisor. Next week, we will have a guest pastor sharing with us. We'll be having Jeff Glass, who will be sharing of the sermon, and we look forward to hearing his words of comfort and of challenge. And now we have several joys, concerns, and prayer requests that have been shared with us for this morning. Okay. Uh, Our first that was lifted evidently during the week uh, was from Al, and Al is happy that he had a successful cataract surgery and is doing well and enjoying enjoying his new vision. So uh, that's wonderful, Al. Mary A. um, posted this just now. Her dear daughter-in-law, Jessica's 96-year-old Tio, Matias, um, survived a bout of COVID, but it now feels the need to move on. They, she's requesting prayers for him and his family as he enters his final steps on his um, journey. Uh, prayers are lifted for that family. Sherry um, asked for prayers for Harry, who is in the hospital right now. I believe this is somebody um, with COVID as well. Um, Elaine um, posted on here, thanks to all the leaders in worship today. Uh, it seemed uh, she appreciated that. And that is what we have right now. We also light one candle to lift up those joys and concerns and prayer requests that have not been shared, but that weigh heavily upon our hearts and our minds. We have one just in, a joy. Uh, Little Ezra uh, is from Kelly. Little Ezra crawled for the first time this week. We rejoice in this new development in this young uh, person. There's one other that I was remembering, and that is we rejoice that Jolinda has been able to come home from the hospital. Let us offer these spoken and unspoken up unto God. We offer these prayers unto you, O God. You know what lies upon our hearts and our minds. We rejoice with those who are rejoicing. We grieve with those who grieve. We pray, O God, that you be with each and every person, blessing them with your spirit of comfort and of peace. We pray a special blessing of gratitude, of being able to come together as the body Christ. Amen.